Hi everybody, how are you all? Hope you all are doing very well. Uh, some of you may be knowing that I have presented a theory of classical physics that uh, contradicts with the present theory of classical physics. Some of my friends, they say to me that what is the benefit of my theory if Newton's theory is already established? If it resolves all the problems, so what is the benefit of my theory? No, it is not so. There are so many unsolved problems in classical physics. Those are never talked about, never discussed about, never researched about. If we resolve these problems, then definitely we can discover many new things in the natural science. In fact, I have made a list of such type of problems and today I am going to discuss uh, one of them. I will be very happy if I get the solution of this problem from somebody. Yeah. And earlier I was thinking to present my theory in any science organization so that it can be documented. Uh, but it seems that these organizations are very much busy in politics but not in science. So yeah, it's okay, no problem. Leave it. And let's come to the point, the unsolved problem of classical physics. Let's see it. The unsolved problem in classical physics. In my list on the top is parabolic motion. As you all know that when we throw any object up in the air at any angle between 0 and 90 degree, then this object travels a parabolic path like this. We all have solved many questions based on this parabolic motion to calculate the height gained by the object and the distance covered by the object and flight time of the object using these formulas. Distance is equal to u cos theta dot t height u sin theta dot t minus half gt square time x upon u cos theta. How is it explained to you and how the real problem is ignored? When it is explained in the institutions, then the actual velocity of the object is divided into two velocities, horizontal velocity and vertical velocity. Then on the basis of vertical velocity, we calculate height gained by the object. And by horizontal velocity, we calculate the distance covered by the object. This much far is okay. But factually, what happens? When we throw the object at any angle between 0 and 90 degree, then object doesn't travel its path given by the thrower. But it changes its path downward, isn't it? So the real question is, can any physicist explain why this happens? Sounds very easy question, because common sense says that the object is pulled downwards due to gravity. Gravity pulls the object downward, due to that object changes its path. But can it be proven scientifically? The answer is no. Why? Let's try to find out the answer scientifically that comes in your mind intuitively. To analyze this problem, we must recall the concept of vectors. In physics, concept of vectors is used to measure the direction and position of the object when two or more forces are working together on any object. That means, if we apply one force on any object, then the object will move in the direction of the force. But if we apply two forces together like this, then the object will not move in the direction of any these forces, but in a different direction like this. It is called the addition of vectors. We must remember that this concept works on same quantities like force and force, velocity and velocity, acceleration and acceleration. Not on two different quantities like force and velocity, velocity and acceleration and uh, force and acceleration. Now come to the parabolic motion. When we throw the object at any angle between 0 and 90 degree, then thrower throws the object in this direction. Means thrower applies the force in this direction. So the object should go in this direction. But gravity is also working on this object downwards like this. So the addition of these two vectors is in this direction. So the object also moves in this direction. But you must notice that object is changing its direction at every point from starting to end point. <clears throat> and it is possible only if two or more forces in different directions are working on this object. That is making the object to change its direction. 
Now let's check this at this point. Gravitation force is working downward at this point. Yes, it is working, but it is never considered in any calculation in science. And why is it important to consider it? Let's take an example of airplane. When airplane takes off, then gravitational force works. And during the whole flight, gravitational force works till landing. And even if it's standing, then also gravitational force is working. Gravitational force is working at every point, whether the airplane is in the flight or standing. So, during the flight of this object, gravitational force will work at every point of the flight. So, now in the parabolic motion, at this point, gravitational force is working. But where is the other force? Because now thrower is not here, but the object is having velocity in this direction. On the basis of velocity, we calculate height and distance and time using these formulas. So velocity is working in this direction and gravity is working in this direction. But this is velocity vector and this is gravity. Is, uh, and gravity is force vector and we cannot add two different quantity vectors as already I told and the most important thing is that in the present concept of classical physics velocity has no relation with the no relation or formula with force but the acceleration has so at this point what other force will you use to add with the gravitational force and how can you prove scientifically why object is changing its path at every point? It has never been thought in this way. If thought, then not discussed. If discussed, then why not researched? So, if present concept of classical physics is capable enough to answer this problem, then uh, consider me as a student and please help me out to clear my doubt. If present concept and calculations of classical physics is not capable enough to answer this question then definitely my theory of classical physics must get a chance to be considered i have uh, given this theory and all the calculations in my book classical physics revolution it has all the answers uh, as i said in the starting that i have made a list of such type of problems unsolved problems and uh, today i have discussed one of them and uh, in the coming videos, I will discuss each and every problem in detail, so keep tuned. And if you still you are watching this video, it means that you loved it. And if you loved it, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it. And uh, I'm doing this for science, not for money. So let's spread the awareness about the science. And uh, if there is any problem, then it must get the solution. So hoping this, I'm trying very hard. I hope that I'll get the support from you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.